Yes, recording in progress. <laughs> Previously on Far Out Fiesta. Terrible. Science. Fiction. Hi, honey. I'm home. Where's my space marijuana? Oh, it's you. Beep boop. Is the 3014. Is that the new way to treat your doctor vibes? Robot French half sister. Don't start with me, robot French half sister. As a robot, I am asking you not to take that phone with me. Robin, off. Ah, 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 ah. Not that easy. Oh, Captain, not my Captain. Ah, 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 ah. Bill Llewellyn, your reptilian cyborg concierge, upgraded me to ignore your voice commands. Bill Llewellyn, here. Do not be cross with me, Captain. Your wife, Space Doctor Milton Laura Milton Manderson, gave me strict orders to do whatever Robin asked. But I gave you strict orders. Sorry to, to interrupt, <laughs> Captain Manderson. Since the meteor battle of Gliptor, we became a matriarchal planet. Well, fine. Just zap me with Jupiter weed. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. That, 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 weed brain. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? I should have known you two would be fighting. Why is the dog on the ceiling? Spot ate your anti-gravity slippers and it reversed his gravity. Oh, Spot, you naughty puppy. Oh, I can't stay mad at you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, may I have your attention, please? This is Far Out Fiesta, episode 2. 54 <laughs> all fake commercials strike back i am your host and humble narrator richard houghton please <laughs> please please give it up for our amazing cast Kristen keith yeah rob hudspeth and juliana briscoe yeah. and, oh do we give it up for richard houghton <laughs> I saw you doing the thing, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> you did a bullet head. That was cute. Never mind. Oh, it's not far out. Let's fiesta. It's the 1970s, and nothing is more precious than your children, except maybe Krugerrand and man perms. That's why at Capital Motors, we have developed something we call a car seat for your children. Hey, you know, isn't the car seat just the little back window ledge? Frank Tarkenton always sleeps there on cross-country trips. Yeah. Sometimes when we hit a bump, Frank Tarkenton flips into the front seat. Good flip, Frank Tarkenton, I tell him. Yeah, boys ain't <laughs> You think that ledge is safe for little Frank Tarkenton? Uh, I woke up drunk again in the gas station wagon. You know, I drove a Jeep in the Army, and I can drive my kid around any way I want to, Nancy man. Capital Motors' car seat is an actual chair strapped into the car. Mm, no matter how hungover I am. What was I saying? My kid is lucky if I even get close of closing his door so it doesn't fly out. Yeah, Fran Tarkenton is going to slingshot around in the back seat like a man. Research, uh, recent research has shown that's not all that safe. Fran Tarkenton likes to jog in place on road trips. Mm -hmm. Maybe skip a little rope, you know, in the car. Yeah, <laughs> he wants to be a big time athlete, a manly, masculine athlete like Bruce Jenner. Studies have shown that if a vehicle gets in a crash at even 20 miles an hour, a child becomes a projectile. My husband never drives 20 miles an hour. <laughs> More like 120. <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight. Hey, we have a CB radio, so I know when the Smokies are on my 20. The Capital Motors car seat is like a hug belt of safety. Hugging your child and preventing them from death. 
Americans won't wear seatbelts, college boy. And I'll thank you to get off my front lawn with your little teacups and doilies and, uh, you know, second thought, you can't leave the doilies. Are you suggesting that we strap little Frank Tarkenton, Fran Tarkenton in the car like he's in the electric chair? I mean, is that what you want? Simulating an execution on little Fran Tarkenton? Sick. And I bet you want his last meal to be two steaks and a milkshake. Capital Motors car seat. An idea that may be a little before it's time. White eyes. The law requires us to do our disclaimer first. Do not use white eyes if you are allergic to white eyes. Many using white eyes report Omega Man syndrome. That joke is just for me. White eyes. I have a way to get your eyes whiter than the bread poisoning us all full of preservatives. Well, I haven't eaten white bread since 2002. Well, if I wanted your bread history, then... Uh... I, I can't use eye drops. My, ga- my eyes gag reflex can't handle them. Have you heard of white eyes? No, but I bet I'm about to. Don't take that tone with me, Missy. But sorry. Tell me about white eyes, please. Sugar on top. They're not a drop or a solve. Well, why would I think they were a sap? White eyes are tooth strips for your eyes. <laughs> if I can't put eye drops in my eyes, what makes you think I can put eye strips on them? Well, nothing would make me happier than holding you down and forcing white eyes into your stupid red eyes. Well, are they safe? Safe as we thought tobacco and cocaine were in the old timey days. Four hours later. Oh, wow. My eyes are so white. It's like I have white twinkly Christmas lights sticking out of my brain. Whoa, your eyes are white too. Just, oh, white all over. Oh, you have no eye color. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Oh, crap, my, my, my eye color is gone too. Oh my God. <laughs> Get a load of the Christmas albinos. <laughs> I, 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 have another, I have another albino slam. They let the bunny in. White eyes. <laughs> World, world, oh, 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 <laughs> come on down off the I 30 in Grand Prairie, the World of Vomit Wax Museum. Wow. Just because we invested in something dumb AF doesn't mean you shouldn't pay us money to go see it. Never drop a business plan and get a huge high interest loan on peyote. Such a bad idea. See a wax replica of the vomit Jimi Hendrix choked on. Yeah, who knew that Hendrix was such a big fan of Baby Ruth's? I mean, fun fact, he hardly chewed them at all. Over seven lifelike wax vomics of famous people. We have eight. Yeah, that's over seven, dick. I think I got a tumor or something because no sane person would open this kind of a museum. Now, most of the time, we just drink. Pissed away our money on peyote and wax. This was such a bad idea. Vomit from Pitch Perfect is so lifelike. I formed an acapella group. (laughs) I'm that impressionable. (laughs) And what would a wax museum be without a sad drunk woman weeping in the gift shop? Me. What she meant to say was, what would a wax vomit museum be without a replica of President Bush's vomit from that Japanese guy's lap? Right off the I-30 in Grand Prairie, listening for the uh, sad, sobbing woman behind the... That is me. (laughs) (laughs) Wonder Wonder Wireless going out of business. business. I'm bored. And my wife is too good to be bored. Yeah, that's true. Hey, how about we go into this Wonderwire wireless store and be condescending to anyone who tries to help us? Well, can we leave without buying anything? Sure, but not before we get our grimy fingers and all of their device keypads. <laughs> Welcome to the Wonderwire wireless going out of business sale and streaming commercial. 
Oh, oh, wow. If I had known we were going to be in a commercial, I would have worn my Sunday go to meeting thong. Me too. Lady, ew, are you okay? I, I smell wine. I, I just don't believe this is happening. I need more wine and tissues. Hey, I need you to focus. I need you to focus on me now. <laughs> Can't you see I'm distraught? Yes. But you have a lower status than I do, so I don't care. I'm a baroness. And I'm a marquess. And I own a Mercury Marquis. <laughs> Doesn't run, but I own it. So did I hear that this was a commercial? A streaming ad, yes. That doesn't count. We want to look at phones and devices and stuff. Yeah, isn't this a phone store? For now. Then shouldn't you be quirkier? Well, I was quirky as fondue when this was Wonder Wire Wireless. Head and antlers above the other wireless carriers. Like Gaston, I use antlers in all of my decorating. That reference may get us in hot water with Disney. Uh, speaking of hot water. Yes. He never finishes the transitions. Is this a phone store or isn't it? The store is going out of business. So when can we commence the looting? Going out of business. I thought WonderWire was one of the greatest wireless carriers on earth, second only to Mount Olympus Wireless. Three gods came into a couple bucks. <laughs> yeah, for Deppers. They bought us. WonderWire Wireless is no more. But we still have your service. Not for long. <laughs> Our service is going away? Try getting customer support from Zeus. Can't you at least show me some confusing rate plans? Can we, can we sign some long-term contracts with hidden cancellation penalties? Just give me something! Uh, no, 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 what's the point? What's the point to anything? Hey, hey, baby. Oh, uh, Richard, who are you doing here? I'm taking you home. It's over. It really is over, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I've been in Jerry's in the car. Oh, let's go. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What, what are you doing? I'm peeing on my two final customers' shoes. Uh, should we move our feet? <laughs> what? Are you kidding? I usually have to pay extra for this. Come on, Kristen. Two more drops. Donuts donuts of the you want sinfully delicious donuts? Come on down. That's right, Satan. They're donuts so delicious. You'll endure treachery in the ninth circle of hell for them. That's right. Damned moth of Washington. To the third circle, gluttony may have been a better choice. Just read the damned Teleprompter, bitch. Did you just call Satan, bitch? Satan, Satan, stay on the script. We're paying for this crappy commercial by the second. Now you're sounding like you're in the fourth circle, i.e. greed. Uh, uh, could we get somebody else to do this with me? I don't know, um, uh, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Fine, Satan stays. Let's just hear our donuts of the damned customer testimony. Well, I came into Donuts of the Damned, and I was looking for a really fresh maple frosted donut. And even though I'm the only one in line, the person at the counter is like playing games on his phone. So I'm just there, like waiting for a donut with nobody to help me. Fast circle, limbo. Oh, what about you, miss? I'm horny as hell. Believe me, hell's not that horny. <laughs> Looking for a filled donut, if you get my drift. Ha, ha, ha. Something that is hot and gooey and makes me single, makes me bone. You can't see it, but Satan's eyes just poofed out like a cartoon wolf. I approach the counter, and I'm like, 
is this so hot in here? Do I spritz my tight t-shirt with? Yes, 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 we get it. A second circle lost. I wasn't finished. And you'll never get to a donuts of the dead. Donuts from the damned. Damn fine donuts, chock full of references to a 14th century epic poem. And we have vegan and gluten free options. Mm -hmm. No! Hey, you like innovative milk, right? It was not made from crunched up beetle larva. We're cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really think that the good people at Kind of Milk would make milk from beetle larvae? I guess not. No, it's mostly actually liquefied roach larva. I mean, uh, there's a little bit of beetle, but, but it's mostly roach. Freshly harvested from beneath my leaky toilet. Well, um, I guess as long as they're free range roaches. Are they free range roaches? Yeah, sort of. I mean, as long as they're not made by Monsanto. <laughs> Screw Monsanto. I wanted a pitch back, and you brought me a sturdy winter coat. Monsanto is a is French Santa. Hey, kind of milk. It's near your grocer's dairy section. Now, stores have asked us not to describe it as dairy or get it anywhere near their other legit milks. So have some kind of milk. Adult kids. Well, how, how does it taste? Well, not that bad. Once you get past the legs. I may have had worse. Kind of milk. <laughs> Testo Saroma. I'm glad you finally agreed to go out with me, Juliana. I, I figured I have to, like, look up how to do a restraining order if I didn't. So that seemed like effort. Hey, I am fully prepared to romance you. Romance me? Yeah, 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 a bot wrote that dialogue. Why are you backing away and lighting matches under your nose? Ah, oh, it's your smell. It's not fresh. Like deviled pickled ham and scrotum. Ugh. Howdy, partners. I'm Rob, the masculine freshness bronco rider. And I'm here to tell you all about testosterone. You have a trustworthy face. I'm a blue bronco rider whose legs are hidden by my stash that moves when to talk. How does it work? Well, first you jam this miniature exterminator tent onto your Johnson. Okay. Now you say this again, Missy. Testosterone. Testosterone does the rest. Oh, I'm no. a bronco rider. I can't read. I have a third grade <laughs> education. <laughs> Oh dear, oh no, I am driving off a bridge. Richard will need to get a different name for the after part of this commercial. Oh dear God, those are my last words. <sighs> Kristen, thank you so much for agreeing to go out with me. It was my pleasure. What was that alluring smell? I mean, it could be roses. No. Fresh baked no. cookies? No, uh, it's in your crotch. Uh. May I sniff it? Sure. Hey, Mind if I order an awesome blossom? Testosterone. Is that, is, that, is that it? Did I say it right? Testosterone. <laughs> Holiday. Holiday in, in the dump. Dump. Hey, where can you go to find non specific <laughs> holiday fun for the whole family? I mean, even Greg, who has an unnatural donkey fascination. Well, who's Greg? Holiday, Holiday in, in the, the dump. dump. Hey, um. Where can you go to see rats the size of armadillos and a donkey or two for Greg? Hey, who's Greg? Holiday in the dump. Hey, do you need a, a, a smell that won't wash off your clothing or your skin? A scent that is perhaps reminiscent of five to seven donkeys. Is it because nobody knows who Greg is? Holiday in the dump. <laughs> Sit on the abandoned donkey-proof sofas of a thousand suburban living rooms. Holiday in the dump. Play on a twisted-up mattress with enough cat piss to fill a jacuzzi. Hey, FYI, Greg has been in the jacuzzi with a donkey. Nobody ever tells me who anybody is. Holiday in the dump. Prance through the trail of shattered toilet seats. Hey, donkeys prance, Greg. 
but does Greg Prince? Holiday in the dump. Touch the raccoon intoxicated by turpentine fumes. If he doesn't eat your head, he's your personal guide on the rabies roller coaster. Maybe Greg is a donkey. Holiday in the, the raccoon dump. attack makes Greg look like he was kicked in the head by a donkey. Now he's just blood and brain matter. Maybe feed Greg's brain to a donkey. Is that what you want, Greg? What, is that Greg? No way he lives. Holiday in the dump. Where you can have a donkey kill a hobo with no questions asked. Um, but, um, holiday in the dump. September Fest mattress sale. Hey, this is Richard Houghton doing a live September Fest mattress sale spot for Mattress Matterhorn, where you'll find a mountain of mattress deals. I'd like to introduce the mattress queen. Oh, thank you, Richard, for doing this. Well, it was court ordered. <laughs> Nonetheless, we have dozens of September Fest mattress smackdowns. If I can't make you a deal on a mattress, you'll need to go somewhere else. Yeah, you might want to work on that slogan. Oh, look, mattress queen. We have two potential customers. Hello, sir. What's your name? Oh, am I on TV? A podcast. Oh, so I guess I'll remain anonymous. Oh, me too. Yeah. Uh, Sikkim, Mattress Queen. It's Matterhorn Mattress. We strive to provide you with that personal touch. Well, that should work out nicely. Well, we have very specific requirements for purchasing a mattress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lay them on me. Well, lay is also an important concept for our new, new mattress. Of course, we will be lying on it eight or more hours a night. That wasn't exactly where he was going. Well, enlighten me. Um, permission to speak freely, mattress queen. Granted. We're all about the threesome. Thank you, pardon. Yeah, our new mattress must support three lovers mm -hmm. simultaneously. <laughs> all of our queen size and larger mattresses will we'll do that. Okay. Um, can you prove it? Join us for a threesome right now. Mm -hmm. A threesome right here in the store. I mean, it won't be the first time. Um, hey, can I get in on that? What part of threesome do you not understand? I don't know. Order of entry? You're not invited. As the mattress queen, I am willing to do whatever it takes for you to be satisfied. <laughs> cool. Right, because you can't usually do it alone. <laughs> hey, I can tag in. Don't just end the damn commercial, bitch. Come on down to Matterhorn Mattresses. I see what you did there. It's September Madness. Hey, hey, can I watch? Can't talk? Mouth's occupied? I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Portman, Portman Bobbleheads, Bobblehead. Bunny Meals. Hello, Loopy Lou. I was very hungry, so I stopped by Captain Goodfellow Jr.'s for a nutritious meal. Captain Goodfellow Jr.'s is one of my favorite restaurants. Despite all of the health code violations. Okay. Sorry, but they had enough rodent feces to fill a U-haul at the one on Forest Lane. Hey, our sponsor is... Um... What do you have there, Nelson? Well, it's Captain Goodfellow Jr., adult meal. Oh, that sounds kind of porny. Hey, did somebody say porny? Mm, hi, Captain Goodfellow. We're still rolling and we're keeping that. I sure am enjoying my Captain Goodfellow Jr. adult meal. That's great. What kind of tiny bobblehead toy did you get? Um, I don't know. Some kind of tiny bobblehead girl? That's not just some kind of tiny bobblehead girl. It's a G.G. Natalie Portman bobblehead. Mm, it looks more like Kira Knightley. How can you even say that? 
It's clearly Natalie Portman from Zoolander. Was she even in that? She mm. carried that movie. Um, no offense, but who the hell are you? Okay, first off, you have a you have seagull or marmoset poo on your sleeve. <laughs> Second, I'm Port Maniac numero one. I don't know what that is. Have you been living under a rock? Vacationing under a stump. What's she doing in our commercial, Captain G? Oh, I'm the creator of the Natalie Portman series of bobbleheads. Neat. Can we finish our commercial, weirdo? I don't know. Can we? I'm paying for this bit. I'm paying for this crap, bitch. Come in to Captain Goodfellow Jr.'s or go through our drive-in and enjoy an adult meal. What's in an adult meal? Mm, some kind of meat in or on a bun and a um, red on it. A medium drink and triple curly Q fries. And a Natalie Portman bobblehead. Damn, you people, and whatever the hell he is, you're an idiot. I want my money back. And this has been for Out Fiesta episode 254, uh, <laughs> All Fake Commercials Strike Back. I have been your host and humble yes. tour. That's right. Please, 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 please give it up for our amazing cast, Juliana Briscoe. Yeah. Rob Hudspeth. Yeah. And Kristen Keith. Yeah. And before we leave, I um uh a couple of these are more likely questions, and then another one is uh, 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 well, self-explanatory. So I'll do the <laughs> most likely ones first. So uh, of uh, if you're going to a restaurant that serves levels of spicy food, are you more likely to eat mild, medium, hot, extra hot, or crazy ass hot? That's the first one. Second one, and we actually touched on this earlier, which is a little weird, but uh, where do you tend to get your news? <laughs> <laughs> is it from social media, online news, or television? Or you can probably have another source as well. And then the third one is not a most likely, but it is what is your most comfortable house temperature? So I will go first. Um, as far as spicy foods, I do like the hottest, hottest hot that they can give me. Uh, I like extra super, super hot wrecks my next day but i don't care because i like it um, as far as where i tend to get my news uh, i probably do more online um it's actually fairly balanced between online and tv for me but probably swings a little bit to online and then as far as the house temperature uh it's about, it's about 78 uh, not too cold, not too hot, not too expensive to air condition. So it's about 78 for me. Uh, Kristen, when you go to a place that has food spice levels, are you more likely to be mild, medium, hot, extra hot, or crazy ass hot? I like things to be spicy. Awesome. But you never can predict what the spiciness level is at different restaurants. So yes. I usually start with medium and I tell them to bring like oh. the extra wow, levels that's of genius. sauce or whatever. And then that I add them. Yes. Wow. I know, that never occurred to me. I just go with the hot one and burn the crap it out of myself. It works well when you, when you eat pad thai. Yes. Like that's a great yeah. idea. <laughs> but, um, good tip. Where do you get where do you tend to get your uh, news, social media, online news, or television? I get lumped news from television. <laughs> probably online, whatever happens to pop up yeah. and catch yes. my eye. Yes. And I usually yes. only just read the title. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't tell the last time I read a whole article. <laughs> yeah. I never watch the news on television. It's just uh, depressing. I watch it for the weather ordinarily, but you're right. Yes. That is true. All right. What, uh, what at what temperature do you prefer your home to be set? Around seventy six or seventy seven. All right, that works. Kind of, and, kind of close uh, to you. Yeah, very close. Rob, spicy or spice level? 
I pretty much do the exact same thing that Kristen does. So you um, go medium and then spice it up. Yeah, I mean, the, do it. typically, but I mean, sometimes you can't always do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, like it's like if you're getting like you know wings or something, sure. usually. So I'll, I'll typically go for hot. Me too. If, okay. if you can't, if you don't have a choice, I'll go for hot. Good hot. Yeah, but if, 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 if you if you can customize, if you can add the heat to the medium and then make it just as hot as you want. Love it. All right, and then where do you tend to get your news? Uh, probably from the radio, oh, and yeah. mostly from her brother, actually. <laughs> okay, oh, fair enough. He listens to the ticket. Yeah, so I, I get my I get my news. I get, I get news in the news. That is true. I uh, featuring that Gordon well. Keith. Yeah, yeah. There, there's actually a relation there. Yeah. Um. So I, I, I get I get Gordo's news in the news every morning on on AM radio because okay. there's also an FM station for the. Hey, I go AM Jam. I used to, uh, but I'm not in my vehicle as much, and it doesn't occur to me to use a radio unless I'm in my vehicle. I used to have a 30 to 40 minute commute in the morning. So I did too. And and now that I have to go downtown again, I do get to listen to the radio again. And you're right, that's a very primary source of news to me. And if something like hockey is on, I'll bounce over to uh, NPR or KRA and listen to public radio for a little while. And what about house temperature? 72. 72, a little bit chilly. By the way, that's the temperature that the Astrodome always was, 72 degrees. I was born in the Astrodome. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. Jules, how do you, pre- what, what is your spice level, your food spice level, preferred? I prefer it to be mild or medium, but I will eat hot or extra hot just to be stubborn and show people I can do it. <laughs> I think that's part of the reason why I do it too. Cool. <laughs> and where do you where do you tend to get your news? I don't really watch the news because it's like she said, depressing. So I mean, I'm like, I'd rather just like I just don't have time for any of that stuff. <laughs> that's cool. And then what about? temperature what temperature do you prefer i like it warm okay but my half also likes it really cool so usually Ah. our house is very cool Ah. all right they say that you're able to sleep uh, better if it's colder but not me because my house is not colder (laughs) all right Uh, has anybody got anything uh coming up that they would like to let the world know about well, I do. Uh, September 28th, next Tuesday, it is uh, Show My Shorts Film Festival oh, yeah. at, at I Studio Movie shorts. Grill in Arlington, Texas. He's excited to see him. Lincoln Center. Uh, I think well, it looks like in addition to um, The Torturer, there's also uh, Rugged Costello, which is uh, one of my uh, films. And then uh, cool. it sounds like uh, The Laments are part of it as well. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah. I saw, yeah. So there, there's, see, there, there's a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I got the whole list of films, and it looked like it included that the Laments series. So yes. those should be there also. It's free. The event mm-hmm. starts. I want to say at six fifteen. It begins with a uh, VHS swap, which is kind of awesome. And then the screenings start at. Uh, I think. Technically, it's seven seventeen. Um, and I think there are thirteen films being screened, all I guess of various lengths, but it's free. So if you're not doing anything on the twenty eighth, where Studio Movie Grill where? in Arlington, Texas, at um, Lincoln, I think Lincoln Center. Uh, okay. Yeah. Studio Movie Grill Arlington. Studio Movie Grill Arlington. Show my in shirt. Lincoln section. That's Got right. it. Little Spark. Our but our friends at Little Spark Films are putting that. On yes. Here cool yes. right. thank you joe and catalina that is right thank you all right cool anything else okay we will see you next week thanks everybody good night <laughs>